Hello, everybody. In this video, uh, we're going to use Abacus uh, to solve a steady state heat conduction uh, problem in a bar. So just a simple, essentially, 1D heat conduction uh, problem. So let me jump across my windows. First of all, I need to open Abacus. Um, so you look, search for CAE. Um, uh, so you can either click on that or hang on if you permissions issues, you can run it as administrator. So I'll open it up. <coughs> uh, so first this back window is gonna look for licenses. If it doesn't get past this, it, no, it means there's something wrong with the, the license server or you can't connect. So you need to be connected to the internet, at least for that, for this part. So um, when Abacus opens up, you'll see something like this. So it'll have a little um, small window saying, do you want to make, uh, what type of model do you want to make? Um, this is like a stress analysis problem, but you can do electromagnetic problems under, depending on the settings you install, there's other problems as well. So we can just go and uh, click with standard explicit model. So if I uh, maximize uh, model now, so the first thing you should always do is you should save your model. Um, and before saving it, we're going to set the working directory. So when Abacus is creating models, it creates uh, a lot of files. And um, so by default, it'll put those in, um, I think your C folder in a temp folder or in, in C folder, um, Similia temp folder. Similia is the, let's say the vendor for Abacus. So we're going to go separate directory. Actually, this is the directory. It's defaulted on my computer. So I'm going to change this. Um, Click on this to open it. It's taking a second. And okay, so you can put it wherever you want, whether that's in a some sort of um, uh, your documents or or somewhere else. So I'm, I'm just going to put it inside my documents, um, and I'm going to create a directory just called Atlas uh, Models. Uh, so I'll select that, click OK. That's my working directory. So now all, all model files just get temporary model files get saved to there. And um, now I'm just going to save this uh, model database. So it automatically opened the working directory. So I'm just going to call this um, hot bar or steady state hot bar and save that file. Okay, so if I just drag this out over here, this is my working tree over here. So this is a model database I'm working on. So I can have multiple models here. So you can see I have a tree on the left and there's one default model called model one, uh, but I can save multiple models uh, here as well. Um, so uh, let me start by renaming this model. So if I right click on the, this here and go rename, I'm just gonna call it steady state hot bar. Click OK. Uh, so the way we're going to set up a model is we're going to start at the top and then work our way down through each of these sections. So we won't need most of them, and um, but we'll we'll uh, I'll, we'll go through each one that uh, we do need. So first, we're going to create our part. We're going to draw our actual geometry. So to do that, there's many different ways you can do the same thing in Atlas. So on parts here, if I double click on parts, it will open up the create part window. And um, if I right click on it, I can go and um, create as well to get to the same way. And up at the very top on the toolbar, there's part and create. So there's at least three different ways to, to open up the same create part window. So I'm just gonna uh, double click. So I'm just gonna call it hot bar is my part. Uh, you can see is it gonna be a 3D part or a 2D part or an axisymmetric 2D part. So I'm gonna make a 2D part and then it's the formal. Uh, this approximate size doesn't affect the actual part. It's just when you see when we go to sketch our part, and um, there's a background grid. So this approximate size governs the the spacing of the background grid. It doesn't affect the size of your part in any way. And um, so I'll just accept the default. Um, and now I'm just going to draw a simple bar. So there's a variety of different ways I can draw things up here. It's just like a simple sketching CAD program. And if I click on one of these, for example, this is the draw box, and you can see it says pick the first corner. If I press escape on my keyboard, that cancels it, cancels it. Any one of these that have a little black arrow in the bottom right, if you hold left click on it, you can see that there's multiple options. So that's what any of those ones are. You can see there's non-do as well and some other things. So I'm just gonna click this box and um, I can just click anywhere for the first point or I can enter the coordinates. So I'm just gonna enter the coordinates zero comma zero. 
So that'll be the origin. So you can see that's the first point. And then I'm going to make a bar uh, that is uh, 10 long uh, in the x direction and, and one high. So I'm just going to type the second coordinate, 10, comma, 1. Press enter. And that's my uh, little bar here. So the background uh, spacing, the background spacing, that was set by that approximate size, basically. So if I just press escape now to cancel out of the box. So if I middle click now on your mouse, if you have a middle click, that's one way to accept. Um, to just say we're done, um, but we can also just left click down here. So that's our part, that's our bar um, created. Um, so the next thing we're going to go to is how to make the, the mesh, how to discretize the space. So you can see we have a part now. So if I open up the tree here, we've got uh, one part here called hot bar. We could create another part, for example. If I open up hot bar, it has certain attributes uh, related to it. So if I open that up, you'll see there's mesh that says empty at the bottom. So if I uh, double click on that, and um, it changes to the mesh module. So if you notice here on the, um, the toolbar, there's these modules. So if we click on part, it goes back to the part module. So all these little icons are changing. But if we go to the mesh module, you can see these icons change as well. And then between the modules, the, the toolbar at the top here may change as well. And so there's different options. So that's what we mean by a, a module. Okay, <laughs> so to mesh the part, we have to tell Abacus how large the elements or M should be or how far apart the nodes should be spaced. So Abacus does that uh, by what it calls seeding the part. So seeding is, is not a generic term, like uh, open foam and ANSYS you'll see don't use the word seed. That's just a specific term that Abacus uses. But seeding basically is just setting the spacing of the mesh. So you can do that by say, saying how many nodes should be on each edge, or you can just say for the entire part. So we'll keep it simple. We'll just click on the entire part. You can see there's a little black um, arrow. So if you hold and left click, there's some options as well. Uh, but we'll just left click once, and it says um, approximate global seed size. So we'll just accept a global seed size of one. You can see there's some other options as well. Press apply, that's okay. So you can see it, it's, um, it set um, uh, nodes. Uh, one one unit apart. Once that's done, then we just click the mesh button. And you'll see down here, it says, okay, to mesh part, we could middle click now, or we can just click yes. Um, and now we have uh, 10 elements along our part there. So they're square elements. Um, there are some options for elements. So for example, um, this button here, if we click this, this lets us dictate what the shape of the elements would be. So for example, if we wanted to make triangle elements instead of squares um, or quadrilaterals, we can uh, change that here. Um, and also this button here is the element type. So this is to do with the, the mathematics of, of how that per these particular finite elements are formulated. Um, but in this case, we're going to do a heat problem. So we just need to make sure that we set it to them to be heat transfer elements. So by default to be in 2D or plane stress, and stress analysis elements, but we want to change it to heat transfer. And um, there's some other options here. You can see you can go from linear to quadratic, and that's to do with the sh uh, shape functions, which we'll get to later, uh, but we'll just leave the defaults then. So heat transfer. Um, okay, so now we have our geometry, we have our mesh. I can just close this now. And next we're gonna make the material properties. So we're gonna have Geometry, materials, loading conditions. Regardless of the software, we're always going to have to make geometry, material, properties, and loading conditions. And then there may be some numerical settings as well. So materials, I can right click and go create. I can double click to go create, or um, I can go material create up the top. You'll see now it's and um, when I double clicked on it, it automatically changes into the property module. And um, so it's just the the options change to do create a material. So I'm going to double click materials. I'm going to call this steel. And um, we're going to do a steady state heat transfer problem. Um, so the governing equation is just um, for every element summing the heat flow in and out of that element, it should equal zero, basically, or at least going in and out of each node, basically. And um, so in that case, it's just this sum around the surface, which is a divergence of the heat flux. And our heat flux Q is equal to the conductivity by the gradient of temperature, or minus that. So we just need conductivity. That's the only uh, material property we need um, for a steady state heat transfer analysis. So if we go conductivity, thermal conductivity, um, 
you can see there's all sorts of options you can do. Um, but we're just going to take the default isotropic uh, conductivity of 50. So that's created a material, but we haven't actually assigned that material to uh, this bar yet. <laughs> so to do, to do that, an advocate to use something called a section. So we're going to double click on sections. We're going to create something called a steel section and um, set the defaults, select the steel material, click OK. Now, if you open up the hot bar part here, you'll see section assignments. If we double click on that, and it says select the region to be assigned a section. So we're going to select this region, just click on it. Um, and then we can press done. But you see here, it has a create set. So in Abacus, it has something called sets. And sets are just convenient ways to, um, to give a name to parts of your, of your geometry. Uh, so we had to click to select all of that, but maybe later on, if um, instead of once again clicking to select all the material, we can just take a drop down of uh, here is a set which is called all of our material. So we can just we can just call that set all. Uh, we could have a set called left and right and top and bottom. You don't have to use sets; it's just there for convenience. So we're going to set, set it to the steel section. Now it changes color. So in the hot bar, we have a section assignment. So that's basically has assigned a steel section. So it's basically saying this is steel. We've assigned steel properties to it. Uh, next, we're going to go uh, down to this assembly. So our analysis actually doesn't contain any geometry yet. We drew the geometry, but we didn't add it to the analysis. So um, we're going to make something called an instance of our part. So the analysis is only performed on the instances themselves, not on the parts. So this can be a bit confusing, but think about it this way. If you maybe were drawing a, a car to do a crash test analysis on, um, it may have hundreds of one particular type of bolt. So you won't draw that bolt 100 times. What you do is draw the bolt once, you maybe mesh it once, and then you will just add that 100 times to the car assembly. So each time you add it, it's called an instance of that part. So it's only instances that the analysis are performed on. So if we just double click on instances, we're going to add the hot bar part, click OK. Now that's added the hot bar instance to our assembly. So we could add that twice, um, but in this case, we only want to add it once. Just be careful of accidentally adding it twice, because if you add two parts right on top of each other, Abacus won't necessarily complain, and you might get very strange looking results, and you might be confused by them. So just check that you've only added the number of parts you wanted. Um, OK, so now we're going to go to this step. And there's always this initial step by default. So it's we're basically going to um, tell Abacus what sort of analysis to perform. So if we double click on steps, once again, you can see the module is changing. Step one, that's fine. And then we're going to say, what type of step is it? So static general is the default one. That's a static stress analysis, like a steady state stress analysis. But we want to perform a heat transfer problem. And you can see there's other types as well. You can have coupled uh, temperature displacement. You can have electric uh, coupling as well and all sorts of other uh, things. And so heat transfer, continue. Um, we're going to change it to steady state, not transient. And um, time period is one, but the time period doesn't matter when it's a steady state because it's just independent of time. All these other settings you can just leave as a default. You can put a description if you want to, but it's, it's, it's not needed. And it doesn't hurt to save. So just give a quick click to save there just in case you get a crash. And it's not that uncommon for, uh, say, complex engineering softwares like this to crash. So it's generally a good idea to, to save periodically. OK, so we've done the geometry, the materials, and now we do the loading conditions or the boundary conditions. So if we skip past all of these, we get down to loads of VCs. So in Abacus, it has these, uh, it splits them into loads and boundary conditions. But uh, this is a bit confusing, actually, because all of these are boundary conditions. Loads are boundary conditions. Uh, a loading condition is just a synonym for a boundary condition. But the reason Abacus does split them, its loads are uh, called Neumann conditions. and uh, PCs are Dirichlet uh, conditions. So, okay, maybe that doesn't mean too much to you now, but it's just there's fundamentally two types of boundary condition. So that's how it splits. So both of these are boundary conditions. It's just uh, Abacus, this is the way it, it, it names them. So what we're going to set up here is we're going to have a fixed temperature on the left of zero degrees, and we're going to apply a heat flux uh, flowing into the bar on, on the right-hand side. And the top and bottom, we're just going to have zero heat flux, so like an adiabatic condition, like no heat gets in or out. So I go PCs, double click, 
or you'll see a change to the module to load. We can go BC create or right click create. So I'll just go um, left and um, temperature continue. And then it says select a region. So I'm going to select this part here. So you can see over here there is sets. So you could um, click, if you had defined a left boundary, you could click sets here and it gives you a list. So I'm just going to click the left here. If you wanted to pick multiple boundaries, uh, you can hold on uh, shift. You can see they're all going red and you can remove them with uh, control. I just want the left. You, it will create a set for us. Uh, why not? I'll just call it left as well. So just in case you need to use it in the future. Um, and it says what magnitude and temperature. I'm just going to say zero degrees. Okay. And you can see it has some boxes here to represent that it's a fixed value of something. Uh, double click on loads, or maybe this time we'll go right click, create. So we're going to have a right heat flux, I'll call it. Um, so I'm going to have a surface heat flux. Um, um, over. So we're going to select the right boundary over here. Um, I'll call, it's going to create a, something called a surface. So surfaces and sets are very similar, um, um, but we'll talk a little bit about those later. It's basically, if you're applying a sort of uh, flux type condition, uh, it needs something called a surface, which is essentially the same as, as, as a set. So I'll call it right and click done. And um, also the magnitude of uh, one, and click OK. So you can see it's drawn some pictures here. You can scroll with your mouse uh, in and out um, to zoom. Um, and if you wanted to move around, there are some uh, buttons up here, like you can pan and rotate. If you click this red box with ours, it resets uh, the view. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually run our analysis. So to do that, we're going to create a job. So we can either double click on jobs or right click on jobs, or we can change to the job module and go job create, um, or we can go job even manager and then uh, create from here. And so there's many ways to do it. So I'll go right click create job. I'll just call this steady state hot bar. And I'm selecting the model steady state hot bar. There's only one model above, but I could have multiple models created here. And continue. The default settings are fine, but you can see there's things to do with precision and parallelization and memory and, and things like that, but they're all, all fine. We'll just leave them where they are. Click OK. Now we have one job. I'm ready to run it. So um, I can go submit. Uh, it doesn't hurt if you want. You can run a data check and it'll tell you if it's missing anything. But if you just submit the model, it'll, it'll also do this check anyway. So it's saying there's no history output. That's fine for now. Um, so Abacus has something called field outputs and history outputs. So field outputs are um, when you run the model, if you want to store any colorful picture, a colorful picture is basically like a colored field or distribution of temperature or heat flux or stress or something like that. Uh, but a history output are, are something about results which aren't a colored field. So maybe you just want to store the total energy in the domain or something like that. So this is pretty quick. So it's said completed. So if I right click on that and I go results, yeah, so you see it actually changed the tab up at the top here. When I open the results, it changed to this results tab. Um, and you'll see here it opened a steady state hotbar.odb. So Abacus, when it runs, it, uh, the, the results files are called odb files. So they can actually, if you have one of those, you can just open those directly without the model itself. You can just open the results. Uh, so now you'll see we have a green bar here. And um, let me just move my face out of the way. Um, so if I click on this colored um, picture here, it will show some default feed field. So it's showing grad uh, T and uh, gradient of temperature. Uh, but we want to look at some other things. So if you see up here, this is showing you what field is being displayed. Um, so NT11 is Abacus is uh, name for temperature. So nice and confusing. And um, so if you see here, it's red, which corresponds to 0.2 of a degree, and then over here it's zero. So if you remember, we set the temperature to be zero on the left. So it has to be zero on the left. That's a boundary condition. And then we were applying heat flux on the right. And um, so you'd expect it to heat up. And then you'd get a, um, this is the steady state distribution. If you click on this little picture here, um, 
this just gives you some more information about what, what you're looking at. So you can look at the uh, heat flux, if I click apply. So we apply the heat flux of one over here. So since it's a constant cross-section area in a steady state, you could just expect a heat flux of one at every point, which makes sense. And uh, the temperature gradient vector at integration points, that's what we were looking at a second ago. And it's also constant. So the heat flux is just the temperature gradient multiplied by um, the conductivity. Um, and then we have reaction fluxes, and that's just to do with the um, at fixed boundaries. If you have fixed the temperature anywhere, then you can see what the heat flux through that boundary is. So that's fine. So what else do we want to do before we finish this tutorial? Well, we want to plot maybe the temperature along the line. So to do that in Abacus, and um, we're going to create something called a path. So a path is basically a line over geometry where we want to plot some uh, results. So if we go over here to paths, I can right click and go create, or I can just double click. So create a path, path one is fine. Um, a node list um, or a point list. So node list is I can just select two nodes. Point list is I can put coordinates in. So I'm gonna put uh, coordinates in. So go continue. First coordinate I'm gonna specify there. So I think zero and then 0 0.5. And, and I have to give Z as well. So Z is just zero. So I'm just gonna pick that point there. So it's one place so of 0.5 in the middle, press enter. So you can see the start. And then I'm gonna go 10. 0 0.50, and you can see it's over there. So we can press OK. So that's the path created. If I click on the path, uh, or double click on it, you can see it shows it. So now that I have my path, I want to um, generate an XY plot over that uh, um, path. So to do that, I go to the XY data here. So if I double click XY data, I do that based on the path, click continue, select the path, um, and then the important thing here is to include intersections. So by default, um, it may only include uh, the values at the um, start and end point of the path. So including intersections every time it goes from one element to another to make sure to take a value. So at the moment, the field has been shown as this reaction flux, which we don't care about. Instead, we want to look at the temperature. So I'll just change the temp to the temperature field, which you can just do right here. And uh, if I click, uh, plot and um, there's our distribution so it's zero on the left and it goes to 0.2 on the right and um, i could change it to the heat flux but and uh, that would be uh, pretty boring because it's just constant just click apply so it's just constant of one it's just fine but let's go back to the temperature and plot it now let's just save it so i'm just going to save it temp along bar and um, just cancel out of this so where was that saved well under xy data here you'll see temp along bar here so I double click on, on that, it shows it here. So if I go back to this and if I double click on this, it'll show it here. But if I right click on that and go edit, and um, that's just the raw data um, itself. So if you click on X and Y, or if you click and hold shift and click on Y, and um, you can copy uh, the data and paste it out into uh, Excel uh, like that. Yeah, I think when you're doing that, you need to start, not click the top and bottom, you need to pick zero and then scroll down to the bottom corner and then holding shift, left click there, and then go copy. And then you can paste that to Excel or Matlab or whatever you want, if you wanted to compare it to an analytical solution or something like that. And the last thing is if you have a lot of plots, you can go report X, Y, and then you can click this here, and uh, it will save any of your plots or all of them to a file called abacus.rpt so rpt is just report so it's just a text file so you can open that in notepad or anything like that you can click okay and that would just write it to wherever your working directory is so that's the end of this tutorial